In 1909, a scientist shattered stone and found fossils that looked like monsters from another planet. Five-eyed enigmas, tooth-ringed mouths, creatures with no living relatives. But these were not alien. This was Earth's life, 520 million years ago before evolution deleted almost every trace. If you think evolution creates order, think again. These fossils are the only evidence that life once tried to become something utterly other and failed. The real question is not how such bizarre bodies existed, but why they vanished forever. Picture an ocean floor half a billion years ago, blanketed in darkness. Life here was fragile. Bodies built almost entirely of water, soft as jelly, scattered across the mud. Then, without warning, disaster struck. Walls of sediment loosened by underwater landslides thundered down and smothered everything in their path. In a matter of minutes, entire communities vanished beneath a suffocating blanket of clay and silt. Oxygen, the fuel of decay, was instantly cut off. The mud sealed out not just air, but the microbes that normally feast on the dead. In this chemical lockdown, bodies that should have dissolved in hours were frozen in time. The secret lay in the microenvironment created by the burial. With oxygen gone, decay slowed to a crawl. Bacteria, starved of what they needed, could barely function. Microbial biofilms coated the carcasses, forming a physical and chemical barrier. Over days and weeks, minerals in the mud, notably clay, phosphate, and iron, began to infiltrate tissues. Some bodies flattened into carbon-rich films, while others took on a ghostly three-dimensionality as minerals replaced flesh cell by cell. Even delicate structures, eyes, gills, and guts, were locked in place before they could collapse. This was not a gentle process. The force of the mudslide crushed and compacted bodies, but it also acted like forensic tape, lifting a near-perfect imprint of each animal's anatomy. In rare cases, the chemistry allowed phosphate or pyrite to preserve organs in almost surgical detail. Modern CT scans reveal the evidence. The fine mesh of gill filaments, the shape of a digestive tract, sometimes even the outline of neural tissue. The result is a level of preservation that reads like a surgical record. Such preservation defies the odds. 97% water, these creatures had no business leaving a trace. Yet the right combination of rapid burial, oxygen exclusion, and mineral infiltration turned a mass grave into a crime scene. Archive. The Burgess Shale and similar sites are not just fossil beds. They are snapshots of life's most radical experiments, captured in the instant before nature wiped the slate clean. Charles Walcott's fieldwork in the High Rockies left an archive unlike anything else in paleontology. Over the course of a decade, he and his team chiseled more than 65,000 slabs from the Burgess Shale, each one a time capsule from a vanished world. Among these, over 30,000 specimens belong to a single animal, Morella splendens. No other Cambrian creature appears in such numbers, Morella is small, barely two centimeters long, with a delicate lace-like carapace and backward sweeping spines. Its limbs, arranged in pairs, suggest a swimmer or crawler, sifting through the ancient mud for detritus. Yet for all its abundance in the fossil record, Morella has no living descendants. Not a single modern animal shares its blueprint. The sheer volume of Morella fossils gives scientists an unparalleled data set. With so many examples, patterns emerge, growth stages, injuries, even rare mutations, offering a statistical window into an ecosystem that lasted only a geological blink. These slabs are more than rock. They are a forensic archive, letting researchers track population structure, feeding habits, and sudden disappearances Modern technology has turned this archive into a digital library. High-resolution computed tomography scans and synchrotron imaging peel away layers of stone, exposing hidden anatomy without destroying the specimen. Gills, 
digestive tracts, even the faint outlines of neural tissue have been revealed in Morella. Captured in three dimensions, at micron-level detail. The data is so rich that paleontologists can reconstruct not just what Morella looked like, but how it moved, how it grew, and how it died. Walcott's meticulous cataloging, specimen after specimen, year after year, was more than scientific diligence. It built the foundation for everything that followed. When later discoveries exposed the true strangeness of Cambrian life, the Morella archive stood as proof. These fossils are not outliers or accidents. They are the baseline, the control group, the benchmark against which every evolutionary experiment must be measured. Anomalo Caris ruled the Cambrian seas like nothing before or since. It stretched up to three feet in length and dwarfed the other animals of its time. The body was built for speed. Broad, flexible lobes along each side rippled in sequence, driving it through the water with an efficiency that would impress a modern engineer. But it is the head that makes Anomalocaris a case study in evolutionary excess. Two jointed appendages, each lined with sharp, recurved spines, swept prey into a circular mouth. That mouth was a ring of overlapping tooth plates, more like a mechanical pineapple slicer than anything alive today. Each plate interlocked with the next, forming a crushing, rotating maw. Fossils from Australia and Canada preserve the jaw structure in such detail that bite marks on ancient trilobite shells can be matched directly to the geometry of those plates. The eyes were another evolutionary gamble. Mounted high on stalks, each compound eye contained more than 16,000 individual lenses. For comparison, a modern dragonfly has about 28,000. In the Cambrian, nothing else came close. That visual system offered a panoramic sweep of the ocean floor, able to pick out the faintest shimmer of movement. With its spined arms, Anomalocaris could snatch soft-bodied prey from the mud or seize trilobites as they molted when their shells were briefly vulnerable. Some scientists once believed it could crack the hardest exoskeletons, but biomechanical tests show the mouth was better suited to softer targets. The fossil record supports this. Most bite marks match the oral cone shape, but they rarely show full penetration on well-calcified shells. Every detail points to a predator built for the hunt, a combination of speed, vision, and grasping power unmatched in its world. Yet for all its dominance, Anomalocaris left no direct descendants. Its design, so effective in one set of conditions, vanished as quickly as it appeared. The Cambrian seas were a testing ground, and even the apex predator could be deleted when the rules changed. Opabinia looks like a prank played on the animal kingdom. Five eyes, each on a separate stalk, sprout from its head like a surveillance system gone haywire. Where a mouth should be, there is a long, flexible trunk ending in a claw. An appendage so strange that even today nothing alive comes close. In 1972, when paleontologist Harry Whittington presented his reconstruction of Opabenia at a London conference, the audience of experts burst out laughing. The drawing looked like pure fantasy, but the fossil record left no room for doubt. Opabinia was real, and it thrived in Cambrian seas for millions of years. Its body, soft and segmented, rippled with lateral lobes that may have helped it glide over the seafloor, probing the mud for small prey. Yet despite its success in its own time, Opabinia left no descendants. Its entire blueprint, five eyes, trunk, and all, was abandoned by evolution, never to be tried again. Then there is Hallucigenia, a fossil that nearly broke the rules of taxonomy. For decades, scientists could not decide which end was the head and which was the tail. Early reconstructions showed it walking on stiff spines with soft tentacles pointing upward like a sea urchin on stilts. Only later did new fossils and high-powered imaging reveal the truth. Hallucigenia had seven pairs of soft, stubby legs underneath. 
and the spines were actually dorsal armor. The head, once mistaken for a tail, bore a simple mouth ringed with tiny teeth. Gut contents preserved in some specimens show a diet of detritus. Hallucigenia was not a predator but a scavenger, sifting through the debris of the Cambrian seafloor. The closest living relatives are velvet worms, but even they lack the outlandish symmetry and spiny defenses of their ancient cousin. These fossils are not just oddities. They are evidence that evolution once ran wild with possibilities. Body plans so alien that scientists laughed in disbelief, then stared in awe. If these creatures make you uncomfortable, good. That means you are paying attention. Hit subscribe, because what comes next is worse. Opabinia and Hallucigenia are reminders that the history of life is a story of experiments, most of which ended in extinction. Their anatomies show that evolution was not following a script. It was improvising, testing designs that would never be repeated. The Burgess Shale preserves these failures in exquisite detail, a forensic record of a time when the boundaries of animal life were still being drawn and redrawn by the blind hand of natural selection. Across the globe, the fossil record tells a story of loss on a scale that defies imagination. At the Chengjiang site in China, layers of shale reveal a teeming Cambrian ecosystem, hundreds of species many with no modern relatives, preserved in exquisite detail. Yet almost none survived beyond the period. In Australia's Emu Bay Shale, Palenian, paleontologists have cataloged dozens of strange forms, armored worms, soft-bodied predators, creatures with spines and tentacles. Greenland's Sirius Passet site adds even more to the list, animals with bizarre appendages and body plans, each one a separate evolutionary experiment. The numbers are stark. Of more than 70 distinct body plans that appeared during the Cambrian, over 90% vanished. These were not isolated disappearances. Fossil beds from Canada to China to Greenland record the same pattern, a sudden burst of anatomical creativity followed by a mass erasure. There is no evidence for a single catastrophic event, no asteroid, no volcanic winter, no global freeze. The extinction was silent and thorough, leaving only a handful of survivors. Modern scientists, armed with CT scans and digital reconstructions, have re-examined these fossils in labs from Beijing to Ottawa. Their findings confirm the scale of the deletion. At Chengjiang, the diversity of soft-bodied animals rivals that of the Burgess Shale, yet almost all are evolutionary dead ends. Emu Bay has yielded fossils with preserved brain tissue and anatomical detail so rare it is almost forensic. But the species themselves have no living counterparts. Sirius Passet's three-dimensional fossils show body plans that look like nothing else before or since. The question is unavoidable. Why did evolution abandon nearly all of these designs? The records from every continent agree. Something swept the board clean but left no obvious trace. The result is a mystery that demands explanation. Three competing theories stand at the center of the Cambrian extinction debate. Each offers a different explanation for why evolution deleted nearly every alien body plan from Earth's oceans arms race. The first theory points to a predator-prey arms race. As predators like Anomalocaris evolved sharper vision, faster bodies, and more lethal weapons, prey species were forced to adapt or die. Fossil evidence supports this. Up to 20% of trilobite shells from the Burgess Shale show healed injuries that match the bite marks of Anomalocaris. Predator diversity in Cambrian seas soared, tripling in just a few million years. Yet not every soft-bodied animal vanished. Some survived, even in the face of escalating attack. The arms race theory explains selective pressure, but it cannot account for the total disappearance of so many experimental body plans. 
oxygen. The second hypothesis looks to the chemistry of the ocean itself. Geochemical records from South China and Australia reveal wild swings in oxygen levels, sometimes dropping below the threshold needed for animal survival. These redox crises occurred repeatedly, sometimes lasting tens of thousands of years. Extinction spikes in the fossil record line up with these oxygen crashes. Isotope data show swings of up to 40% in nutrient and oxygen availability. But the timing is not always perfect. Some groups survived through anoxic intervals, and not every extinction event matches a chemical drop. The oxygen theory explains mass die-offs, but it leaves gaps in the pattern. Optimization. A third explanation focuses on evolutionary optimization. As new body plans flooded the Cambrian seas, natural selection began to favor those with the most flexible, modular designs. Statistical models show more than 70 body plans at the start, but only five make it past the Cambrian. Survivors share traits, bilateral symmetry, adaptable structures, and developmental plasticity. Over time, the evolutionary tree narrowed. This theory explains the long-term pruning of diversity, but it struggles to account for the speed and scale of the loss. No single theory fits all the evidence. The fossil record points to a complex interplay, predation, environmental upheaval, and selective survival all shaping the outcome. The true cause of the Great Deletion remains one of paleontology's most enduring mysteries. Seventy distinct animal blueprints appeared in the Cambrian, each a radical answer to the question of how to build a body. Within just 20 million years, a geological blink, over 50 of these vanished forever. Vanished. The math is unforgiving. More than 90% of evolutionary experiments ended in total erasure. Since then, in half a billion years of animal life, not a single new body plan has joined the roster. Every living creature, from earthworms to elephants, is a remix of the five survivors arthropods, mollusks, echinoderms, chordates, and annelids. The fossil record draws a hard line an initial burst of innovation, then a lock-in so complete that evolutionary novelty at this scale simply stopped. The Cambrian explosion was not just fast, it was a one-time deal. Earth's oceans during the Cambrian were nothing like today's. Seawater chemistry was in flux, oxygen levels surged, minerals like calcium and iron drifted in unpredictable waves, and sulfate ran low. These changes did not just shape the landscape. They set the rules for what life could attempt. The evidence is clear. Only in this chemical playground did evolution unleash such a wild variety of animal forms. Yet even as oxygen rose and minerals shifted, something else was happening beneath the surface. The explosion of new body plans came to an abrupt halt, and for half a billion years, no new blueprint appeared. Was it the chemistry that closed the door? Or did evolution itself run out of ways to experiment? The Cambrian Oceans may have been a one-time ticket to biological strangeness, a window that opened, then slammed shut. The fossils offer clues, but the final answer remains buried in time. Today, every animal alive is built from the same five ancient blueprints. Meanwhile, over 90% of Cambrian body plans remain extinct erased by evolutionary selection. As we search for life beyond Earth, it is this fossil record, not science fiction, that sets the real limits of biological possibility. Earth's strangest experiments are over, the rules have changed, and the proof is set in stone.